Good afternoon, welcome. I'm very happy with the turnout here. Uh, I've been working at this for a long time and I was absolutely surprised with the number of people that uh, approached me and told me that we were actually using the stuff that I'm doing. Because in general, you only get some feedback if you break it, but not a lot of stuff if it just works. So I think not hearing things, I'll take that as a good thing for now. And I'll just keep with it and do these kinds of silly things. So for you, all of you that do not know me, I've been a long time FreeBSD user, probably since 5.3-ish, uh, which was shortly after the 5.0, which I have not uh, me, uh, experienced, which was very bad. I'm not a developer by profession, I, uh, or sorry, by the education. I am actually a, a chemical engineer. And I'm definitely not a cryptographer. So if you want to know about ChaCha and Poly, I know that they exist, but uh, I don't know front or back of it to see actually what it does. I just make it work. I've been an active contributor in the FreeBSD channel on Freenode for as long as I can think of, I guess, from the early days. And I'm the maintainer of the LibreSSL ports MariaDB ports, uh, which is a MySQL replacement. Yes, I'm sorry for you too. And uh, I currently uh, I have some new ports coming up. i just been relieved from mentorship as a port committer. Uh, and I have a collection of LibreSSL port patches because not everything works with LibreSSL out of the box. And I'll come back to that. My day job is I'm an enterprise application integration architect at Philips Lighting. If you ever get offered that job, don't. It's boring. So this is why I do all this stuff in the evenings. And if an emergency patch arrives, that will be happening through the day anyway. And I'm a volunteer at our local fiber uh, cooperative, which is in a bit of trouble, but we'll figure it out. And I do a bit of uh, volunteering for Bits of Freedom which is kind of the Dutch chapter of EFF, EDRI. So it's all about privacy and um, I did a bit of a toolbox, or I've written a bit of the toolbox. So how did we get here? Everybody, I assume, recalls Heartbleed, which was very bad. And in April 2014, our OpenBSD friends decided that it was time to fork OpenSSL and make it a bit saner, so they did. And I started live blogging the flensing, as they call it, of the OpenSSL code. And they removed everything left and right, and tdos and joels and all. If you, if you look at the commit messages, it was hilarious to see what was going on all the way through these uh, first months. They removed all the old platforms, insecure features, and they ended up... Oh, sorry, yeah, well, this is an intermit intermittent slide. So Heartbleed was an implementation-specific problem in OpenSSL. But there's also a lot of SSL attacks recently on the protocol itself, which I've listed here. I've stolen this from somebody else's presentation. But uh, in red, I have the stuff in there that is actually deprecated. Thou shalt not use this anymore in 2015 or 16. So you see that a lot of old stuff uh, that you have around in your software ecosystem actually leads to a lot of issues and not having them anymore provides you benefit because you could strike these ones out. They're just not available anymore. The Core in Infrastructure Initiative, this is something which started very shortly after LibreSSL was started. It's my feeling that it was a reaction to the stuff that Libre was doing. Um, it is, uh, I think it's, yeah, it's funded by the Linux Foundation. Sorry, I don't have the thing on the screen here, so I'll be looking at that. This, is, this machine is too new, so we don't have the graphics driver yet. And they had a security audit by NCC, which uncovered a lot of problems. And I think we had, a, I, I think every couple of months, there would be a new OpenSSL patch release where the findings of NS, uh, NCC group were fox, uh, fixed. And it led to a lot of emergency patching. I know that Ray Percival told me that he had sleepless nights because he had to get out and make sure that all his OpenSSL stacks were upgraded again. So where did LibreSSL end up? Well, at least 35% of the code was removed. So that's good. 
So all of the all of the unsecure and outdated features and platforms have been completely removed. So I'm sorry you cannot try this on BOS or Vax VMS or anything. And the first portable release happened halfway of 2015. And that's where the story starts outside of OpenBSD for the rest of the world. Uh, the, they added new features as well a bit later on, uh, which was libtls initially, which is a wrapper around libcrypto and libssl, but with less foot sho shooting capability, so it tries to do the things smartly and securely for you, so if you can, use it. And they uh, uh, Bob Beck, as a, a showcase for libtls, he uh, SSLified Netcat, which you all have. In FreeBSD, our Netcat is the OpenBSD Netcat. And if you were to install the LibreSSL ports, you get uh, a Netcat that does SSL as well, in addition. So this is going to be fun to merge the current one back into base FreeBSD, because that surely does not have LibreSSL yet. So it also ended up... Um, this, this is as far as I know it. I've heard that you actually have a LibreSSL binary on, open, uh, on OS X. I know they state that, that Open ELEC, that's a Kodi thing that you can run on an RPI or anything else, uses LibreSSL. Void Linux has LibreSSL integrated. I know for Gen 2, you, well, you can do about anything, so let's forget about them. PCBSD, if anybody runs PCBSD, this runs PCBSD. PCBSD uses LibreSSL from ports for all of the ports. And if you were to find one that still links base OpenSSL, do let me know, and I will make sure it no longer does. Hardened BSD is in the process of starting to migrate completely to LibreSSL. And that's now kind of a proof of concept, and we're making sure that everything's uh, fine and dandy, and then it will be shipped. OpenSense already uses LibreSSL, I believe, uh, in a separate branch, if you want to, for all of the ports, so not for base yet. But hardened BSD is probably going to be the first one where you can have free BSD without OpenSSL. Well, the command is there but all the old code, all the OpenSSL code has then been replaced with Libre. So I collected some things from OpenSSL in base. So these are the uh, security uh, announcements, which is quite a lot. And this means usually that you have, uh, have an upgrade of your complete system for an OpenSSL vulnerability. You might notice that there here's one which I don't have a number for yet. So you all be very busy next week somewhere because there's one of the uh, vulnerabilities has already been uh, publish, uh, published or it's a scientific paper on a vulnerability in the DSA signing which mostly hits you in OpenSSH. So please go and disable DSA in OpenSSH for now. Uh, it's already fixed in LibreSSL because it was, if it's out in the open, the guys immediately hit it and they roll a new version. Secured, so the port, Security LibreSSL, was ported within a day after 11th of July 2015 by Zevolot from RSpamD. So the port was there very early. And currently we are, as of yesterday, day before yesterday, FreeBSD is at 236 for the regular port and 241 for the development port. Uh, I'm, I'm using the development port on my server at home already, another port, sorry, in base, because you get full IETF compliant ChaCha20 Poly 1305. So I don't know what it is, but I have it. <laughs> so vulnerabilities. Uh, this is something, and I made sure that I've listed it here, those counts are outdated. So since they forked, I, I tallied up all of the things that were coming by and the levels and what you should be able to see is that with LibreSSL, you had none of the high vulnerabilities, you had about half of the medium vulnerabilities, 
and a lot fewer of the low uh, cl classified vulnerabilities, which I think was pretty awesome. So you have to patch less, and the stuff that you have to patch is actually of, uh, usually of a lower criticality. Is it that simple? Well, of course not. That would be too easy. So with the first release, uh, I was using it myself. At some point, uh, Chris Moore, uh, uh, he wanted, uh, or sorry, he approached me to see if I were, were willing to see what would happen if they would switch to the LibreSSL port for PCBSD. And that's when I got my X-Run capability, because anything I do now folds back into PCBSD. PCBSD will build the whole port tree, and I know exactly what fallout I have, because the, the, the Poudrier logs are uh, publicly visible. So just have to see what changed, what broke, and we roll on from, the, from that. The amazing part was that there's also software that broke, which you would not actually expect, like the Apache daemon. I discovered that very early because that's something I personally use still. I know I'm a bit old by now. And Python wasn't working. OpenL that would fail to build. Uh, curl would fail to build. Fail to build. And that surprised me because I th I would think that they would be upfront with security and everything that is possible because some of these things were pretty stupid. With the advent of uh, uh, LibreSSL 2.3. It, I, I went through the same thing again. This, so this is about a year later. They removed SSL v3 completely, which catches out a lot of ports because they just don't, they have not implemented that even though the, the no SSL3 flag has been available in OpenSSL for a long time during build. And again, a lot of very large visible projects failing. So that is what I've been doing, and that, that tends to be a lot of work, and there's a lot of crunch time because you, you want to get that stuff out there as soon as possible. So you churn through all the ports and make sure that they work again. And there's a lot of bad examples out there. And somehow, the, the crappy stuff that people do, it proliferates, it perpetuates, people copy the wrong examples. Uh, so what you see, actually, is that patching many a time isn't, not, isn't that difficult, because actually you'll be just redoing the same thing over and over again for exactly the same way somebody's implemented it. It is almost to the point where you can apply the patch from one project to another project, which was scary. Um, SSL v2.3. If you do build something nowadays with SSL, do please use SSL v2.3 methods that are available in uh, both OpenSSL and LibreSSL. It allows you to, uh, uh, to create SSL connections up to TLS version 1.2. So the 2.3 is meaningless, it's just anything. You will find TLS replacements in uh, uh, LibreSSL, but I also believe in OpenSSL from 1.1.0 which are exactly the same, but just SSL v2.3 is replaced with TLS, and it, everything just works. Um, and then you have the uh, SSL operations flags, which just allow you to switch off anything you don't like, like uh, TLS v1.1, whatever you wish. And one thing that I've been, the last one uh, that I've been hit with uh, is the version number checking that everybody does. This is bad uh, uh, practice. So you see a lot of projects checking for uh, a specific version number of OpenSSL to detect that compression was added to OpenSSL. That's, we know that compression is problematic, but if you, so if you, if you remove that from the code, you're going to be hit with a lot of projects failing because they failed either during build or even during runtime on something not being available anymore. So do not check version numbers. And, yeah, the statement, the last statement, they can, will, and should be deprecated at some moment. So be as, uh, uh, do your checks proper, check for, uh, like, a define that is made specifically for a feature or whatever you can do, but don't check the version number. 
I talked about upstreaming a bit before. So upstreaming is a tedious process that actually takes more work than doing the patching. I have about 200 of these, so you will be uh, connecting with anybody and everybody, and you will be connecting with projects that are just blatantly refusing to add anything that would aid OpenSSL, uh, LibreSSL, for some unknown reason. So there are those. And we have a lot of old, abandoned, unmaintained, whatever you have, ports in our ports tree. I think one of the, uh, if, if, if this is all stabilized and everything is done, I kind of make, I think I'll make it my personal crusade to, to kill all that stuff and to start deprecating a hell of a lot of ports in our tree. Because this is specifically if you talk about things that use SSL and stuff, you want to have maintained stuff in your ports tree. You don't want to have things that are no longer maintained. That's, that's just a fire hazard. So I still have a, a huge number of patches to upstream or to find the, the point where you can upstream to because things don't no longer exist. And I, 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 it felt like trawling through a morgue of dead code and stuff. This is really horrible. If you want to... Uh, have a look at all of the patches. So if you are using it or if, you, or if you're intending to use it, I have lists with patches usually of all of the things that can fail on the FreeBSD wiki page. The, the presentation will be uh, publicly uh, um, available so you can check later on in the slides. There is a slide with all of the links that you can use from the PDF. And if you have time uh, and you're willing to, helping out with the upstreaming would be most welcome because there's a lot of hoops to jump through nowadays. People want you to sign contributor agreements and, and I'm like, I added two, and I, I added one or two if devs. So you want me to, or shall I tell you what you need to do and then you do it yourself because you don't want to go through the hassle anymore of faxing signed paper. I don't even have a fax. For God's sake. So the FreeBSD port tree has another a number of interesting uh, wow, problems, issues. There's still a lot of uh, uh, ports that don't actually honor the with OpenSSL port flag that you can set in your make.conf. So you, you would want it to build with OpenSSL from ports, but actually it will grab OpenSSL from base. This is currently very nicely apparent if you have, uh, if you run head, which FreeBSD 11 has OpenSSL 102H, and the port is also 102H. There's a difference, however. The base system has SCTP enabled, the port has SCTP disabled. So we saw CMake blow up because actually, so it was using the headers from the one, and at link time it used the other one which doesn't really match up. You wanted to say something, Matt? Yeah. If you have a recent port, for example, the one in the middle of the port, tell me how it's... Yeah, well, I know. I, if, if I find them, I, I fix them. This is... It's, it, and, and there's been very silly things that you need to go through to actually make uh, software use the correct libraries. So actually, the libraries that you want. And mixing base and OpenSSL ports, linking in your ports is a recipe for disaster. It will bite you immediately, later on. Funky things happen. Just don't. Just stay out of there. Don't do it. And there's this tiny thing. You must rebuild, or, well, if you, if you use Poudriere, that's fine. You must rebuild all your ports when you switch to Libre or even if you switch from Libre to Libre Devel, because otherwise you'll have funky results. It just, just don't. So I wanted to tell you a bit about the, uh, the lifespan and the, uh, the end of life of all of these products. So FreeBSD 9, 9.3 is still supported, right? Till the end of next year, I think? End of this year. <laughs> well, that means that we're running an end of an, an, an unsupported OpenSSL version for a year. And actually, I was checking up on, the, on it this morning, 0.9.8 has been 
productive than for 10 and a half years, which is for a security product pretty long. So we're now in the 10 branch. Th that is our main, so our main op uh, OpenSL version is 101. That will get security patches up to the end of next year. Uh, sorry, this year, yeah. <laughs> and then it had about a lifespan of a little less than five years. So we'll be running 10.3 for quite some time with an unsupported OpenSSL version, which is poor practice, I guess. But hey, Red Hat does the work for us, so we just bring in their patches and be done with it. For 11, we have imported 102 now which has full support until the end of 2019, which is again about five years. And I'm quite sure that we will run out of uh, time by the end of the, the 11 branch, where we're still on 102, but it's already end of life. So if you compare that with OpenBSD, thank you guys, they, they're on the clock. Well, sometimes they'll tell you they'll release a new version at the 1st of April, but then that is April Fools. So they actually release every 1st of May and every 1st of November, and they only ever support two versions of LibreSSL. So this is an issue if you want to run it in base, because you don't have a very stable LibreSSL version going forwards. And I'm quite sure that nobody's going to be willing to backport any fixes or to earlier LibreSSL versions. I would say don't. So this is what it looks like, and I try to visualize that a bit. So these are kind of the things where we are vulnerable. We have an unsupported OpenSSL version in the FreeBSD uh, stuff. So you see here in 098 was released 2005, 100, 2010. 101 was released in 2012. So here 2015 was 102. And 110 should already be released, but there's some delay. So that. Yeah, they said somewhere in May, but <coughs> it's June, as far as last time I saw, uh, looked. That's what my flight ticket said. Okay, then there's, uh, what can you do with it? So, I'll, I think about two years ago, Adam McDougall, uh, he wanted to have a, 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 a place where he could build his ports without having to deal with OpenSSL from base completely. That actually is not as straightforward as it looks because we have a uh, without OpenSSL flag for source.conf, but that doesn't build because there's more things that you need to disable which have not been included in the, uh, in the dependency tree for, somehow, for some reason. So you have to set a couple of other things and you have to disable SSL in libfetch, which is not very nice. Ultimately, we found out that this is only really useful if, you're, if you're, you run it in a jail. Because if you start running this in a live system, you'll get trouble with package and libfetch. Because they are very specific in the way that they link uh, uh, the libraries. Then another thing where Alan Jude had been working on, and uh, I, I kind of stole his patch and tried to make it even better is to make libraries private. In FreeBSD, we have private libraries that are not available for uh, linking against. So on 10x, you will have them in user lib private. And in 11, they will be renamed into lib private SSL, lib private crypto, or whatever. Um, yeah, that I've tried to use because not all ports will use the correct libraries. And there's a, uh, I've linked here, a a PR which, which kind of lists all of these things that have a problem. This, again, gives you trouble with package and libfetch. There's that, that is the consistent thing. And uh, I am told it is absolutely possible, ultimately, to make libcrypto private. But that needs even more work than we've done on it already. So the result was OK. But the problems that you'll have is package and libfetch. So then, why not replace OpenSSL in base? If OpenBSD can run it in base, why, can, why can't we? 
So I tried this. I was at a hackathon in Croatia with the Libra, uh, the Libra SSL and OpenBSD devs. And I tried that, but I was a bit fresh on make files, and I didn't know the base system at all at that time because I only did ports. So I failed miserably. I had an absolutely great time with these guys. If you ever can and they ask you to come, go. They're the best to hang out with. And Brent Cook, he's the, uh, he does the portable build or the release engineering mostly. He said, well, no, don't, don't, do it, don't try to do it the FreeBSD way. Just import our make files and be done with it. And I, I was, well, not comfortable enough with that yet. But so the other thing that you should take away, if the OpenBSD devs tell you, well, you better do it this way, then you could actually try it and it might work. And then suddenly comes along Sean, and Sean probably had seen my work as well, Sean Webb from Harden BSD, and he had a challenge for me. Can you create for us a configurable LibreSSL in FreeBSD or Harden BSD base? And we were discussing a bit, and that seemed possible, so I started at work, and actually, if I listen to Bo, uh, uh, Brent Cook and I follow his advice, then actually it wasn't really all that difficult. So a bit about the base system framework. So everything lives in user source. We have our uh, main make files. So there's two things where I needed to patch up for 10 in BZ own and in uh, 11 for in source ops. I added a knob with LibreSSL, just like you have with OpenSSL, without OpenSSL. It works exactly in the same way. You have crypto, uh, user source crypto OpenSSL, where the, uh, the actual sources live for OpenSSL. And then in secure lib and user bin, you have the actual make files that will build the stuff from crypto. So these are the ones that I focused on. So for LibreSSL, what did I do? I just unpacked LibreSSL into crypto, just the portable tarball. Um, you unpack it, you rename it, you're done. And I actually did it this week with a 2.4.1 release. I rebuilt OpenSSL, or yeah, the, uh, LibreSSL in this case, and it was all fine. So in secure lib, lib crypto, I just added additional files with a suffix LibreSSL which is so the, the ink is the one that gets included everywhere for, for main variables. And this will actually build LibreSSL, the same for LibSSL. I added libtls and netcat. And these make files, basically, they are the ones that I imported from OpenBSD's base system. So I pulled them from CVS, not from GitHub or anywhere. So really the, the basic thing. So this is, this is what happens in the, back, uh, 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 in the background with, with LibreSSL. So there's default no options. Actually, we now switched in hardened BSD the LibreSSL branch to default yes options LibreSSL because that's the whole point of that tree. And this is what you need to do to get it to build. This transforms internally. All of these transform into make LibreSSL. So that's what you need to check for. And I had, for, uh, I had to add libtls where possible because that's a library, so that should be known to the whole framework. The existing make files. Once I, uh, oh, actually this is wrong, but never mind, you can find the sources. You need to include the correct options uh, make file from, uh, from, the, uh, from share make. And all you need to do is check if it's no. The original make file is just here, in here verbatim, so I don't do anything about the current stuff. Only if make libreSSL, uh, uh, so at the end I include the libreSSL file. So if you don't do anything, you get exactly what you have now. So you get OpenSSL in the version that is in the base system. So this makes switching extremely easy because you can flip the switch, rebuild your base. Well, you need to rebuild all your ports, so you need a lot of time. 
but not a lot of effort. So this is why this, uh, this has gone this way. And also, if anything changes in OpenSSL, the whole thing is still in there. So we just, we put it between the, bre in the first if, and we're fine. So also merging is probably automatic because it's at the beginning and at the end. For the rest, nothing changes, so any updates will just merge in with Git. And then, once you've done that, then you start building, then we get back to 2001 again. In 2001, I, I have a, a backup slide if we have too much time, but I guess that won't happen. There's a commit in the OpenSSL tree that's, uh, uh, that says, yeah, well, we renamed all of the DES methods, and they're now no longer lowercase, they're uppercase. And the invocation is different, not by reference, but with a, uh, with a pointer. And they included a header which is called des underscore old dot h. And they promised us, they, we will deprecate that by, uh, uh, what was it? Before 100 appears. I can tell you that it's now gone in 110, which is not even out. So it's still there, it's 2016, so this happened about 10 years too late. <laughs> LibTelnet and PPP in our base system have that deprecated stuff in there still. It is trivial to replace with the modern ones, but nobody's bothered ever to actually do that, so I think I now created PRs for these. And then we have Heimdall in base, for some reason, it still wants the entropy gathering demon, and I think that thing has died long ago. I think for the last 10 years, there's not a single system that you can buy that actually uses the Perl entropy, entropy gathering demon. But because OpenSSL had the methods, everything just assumes that it's there. And in 11, I encountered a bit of the future. So did I tell you about version number checks before to see if any features available? There you go. Even in WPA, so that's the uh, uh, wireless authentication, they had a check in the latest version, OpenSSL version number. So, but they, these again are pretty simple fixes. There is, oh, sorry, I have, however, introduced a tiny difference between ports and base. So what we did originally in the port, or Chepka actually, <laughs> early on it was difficult if you, if you set, if you keep the OpenSSL version number as you find it in a tarball, it's defined as version 2000, which kind of freaks out because everybody, everything that checks if a version is greater than whatever, two is always greater than one for some reason. So these will all be uh, evaluate to, to, uh, to true, and I would have, you would have things left and right falling over for lack uh, uh, of uh, compression, what, what have you, and it's deteriorated, of course, with 110. So what Cephalot did, he added, he, he, he patched the uh, version to be 101F, which is at the time at which LibreSSL forked, and then you have kind of a comparable set of features in LibreSSL, and that just works. So what happened later on is that LibreSSL also added a LibreSSL version number, which makes our life a lot more easy. So if there's any check for OpenSSL version number, we just say, and not defined LibreSSL version number, and usually 9 out of 10 will just go through. I found that this change, I've now uh, I've, I've, I've not applied that for base because I think it's time that we just use the, the, the stuff that we have. The fallout was relatively low. And these are all categorized on the wiki. So if you want to go in and see how much is affected, they all have their label in a table that says which feature is actually failing. So this is uh, WPA. So that was a check that they had. So if it's larger than 101, so, and I made it like this, and then it's fine. I think that's upstream worthy, so that's not an issue anymore. So that flows back into our base system. LibreBSD? Well, I've created, I've created a repo. I've called it LibreBSD, but it's not going to be a distribution. Yes? 
Yes, kind of. <laughs> so you get a weird logo where I try to merge the, what is it, the Che Guevara beret with the, mm. so forget about this, but it's not going to be a separate distribution. It's going to be probably, so it's going to be in hardened BSD and PCBSD if you want it, but I'm not going to maintain, I'm not going to fork, it's just this. So, how far along are we? Ah, we have 20 minutes left. Excellent. Um, so, I need to finalize and polish up the stuff for LibreSSL in base. Actually, it's already further polished and done. Um, committing and upstreaming the LibreSSL patches upstream, uh, so, so for ports. So, I've been released from mentorship. I think I've been the guy that was mentored longest in the history of ports. So I don't know why that is, probably because I'm Mr. Chaos and I make the... It was just Koobs. Oh. Well, you'll be listening in because it's live streamed. Oh my God. <laughs> I guess he was. He was seeing this. Oh, that is the point. So I can now actually commit all that stuff for the, for the old things that are failing in ports. Anything that doesn't have a maintainer, I should be just committing to the port three very soon. Hardened BSD and PCBSD with LibreSSL as the default lib lib crypto <laughs> provider. I think that will be a, a very fast thing, specifically because PCBSD already builds fine all the ports with LibreSSL and base is no issue. So Matt Arn Mathieu Arnon, who is our port manager, he has created something which is uses OpenSSL make. So Okay, yeah, well, it's use open, uh, where did, did I? Okay, yes. <sighs> Typo, I'll fix that. That is about to land in the port tree, I guess. So that means that all of the, uh, it actually is backward compatible. So use open SSL equals yes in your ports make file still works, but you should be switching to users equals open SSL. And then you can add base, ports, OpenSSL, LibreSSL, and LibreSSL Devel, and even OpenSSL Devel, which is also a port. One thing that I hear pretty consistently out of the port community is that at some point FreeBSD intends to switch all ports to default to OpenSSL from ports, no longer from base. So the base OpenSSL should be there with the only objective to serve anything that is in a base system. And if you have ports, they all rely on ports open SSL. And yeah, well, I, I added three question marks. I see no reason now, seeing how easy it was to do this, to have this in base as well. So this is for the not so faint at heart, because you'll be uh, bumping the shared lib version more often. So at least once every half year. You can hold off for another six months, but that's it. So you have a, a big change every year. But if you run on a home system, I guess you'll be fine. So this is also why uh, PCBSD could manage this, because they build their own, uh, the, they, the, the upgrades that you get using the upgrade mechanisms. They have full control, so they can just flip it to the next version, and everything is fine. And the, 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 the ironic bit that I found over the past uh, months, I guess, since 1.1.0 was released, is that I found that OpenSSL benefits greatly from all the work that's been done by, uh, by OpenBSD, myself, anybody, on LibreSSL. Because guess what? What happened in, in version 1.1.0, which is now in beta something, it's the fifth pre-release version. The SSL v3 methods have gone in the default build. So you can re-enable them still, which you cannot in LibreSSL, by the way. So it's gone. So they would be facing exactly the same issues as I have with the FreeBSD port tree because the removal of SSL v3. So they don't have to go through that anymore. All the patches are available already, so they have a smooth landing. Same goes for EGD. It is no longer enabled by default in the build. So if somebody re... 
So the people that still use VAX and BIOS and DOS and whatever, uh, they can still do that. They can enable it and they can use the Perl Entropy Gathering Daemon because that's a very smart plan. I think, I, I, I don't, really don't understand that because if you still run a, version, a system that old, are you really going to upgrade to 110? I, I, I would imagine that everything just caves in immediately. You have an, an immense implosion and your system stops functioning altogether. So that that's all that I talked about before. After 15 years of promise, they've removed it. And if you check now, I've created myself the OpenSSL develop port, more as an exercise to see if I could do that than anything else. And it has a lot of options, but it, uh, uh, it defaults to what I think is sane and secure, and which, is, which means that most of the stuff that is questionable has been disabled there as well. Enable it at your own uh, what, what is it? Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, at your own peril. Yes, absolutely. MD2, you can still have it. So the last slides, I want to thank OpenBSD. The, the, the guys that I worked with before aren't here, unfortunately. Um, and I wasn't, Chris is not here, is he? He's somewhere else, probably. Chris Moore from uh, PCBSD. Who, uh, yeah, we spend massive amounts of uh, compute resources on uh, building the sports. Every time I uh, update uh, LibreSSL now, he has to rebuild half of the ports tree, which is pretty significant. I want to thank Harden BSD, the team for the trust patience in working with me to get this stuff done. And there's this guy, Frogs, who can't be on other channels anymore because he... He has to go via Tor, so he's a bit of a tinfoil hat, I guess. He pushed me to get stuff done. Very early days. Alan Jude for the patches for the private libraries. Sevalot Kubilai Kochak, or Kubes as we call them, because the, his original name is a bit difficult for all of us. Uh, my two mentors originally. Ooh, I now see I left out Mark Felder, who became my mentor a bit later. Oh, bad. And Johannes for their help pushing and whatever, because I would never have got this done. I hope to give a talk about what it means to, be, to actually start doing something with uh, providing back rather than being afraid to provide back because you think you're not good enough. Because obviously that is not true. I suck at everything, but still I can do this stuff. Sorry? Mentor three people before giving that other talk. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, that, yeah, I think that would be a valuable experience. Yes, that he says I should mentor three people before giving the talk. This is the page of links that I promise you, and I have some backup slides, but let's try. Is there any questions? Yes? Yeah, so the question is to the whole crowd, how does, uh, how do, do formalities deal with uh, uh, open or LibreSSL, for instance, PCI DSS compliance and stuff? Sean, you wanted to co comment on that? Okay. Sorry? 
yeah, auditors are funky people, right? So they do whatever they want. So you would be okay for PCI, but not for NICAP and common criteria. You maybe, yeah, okay. So Peter. So you may not be losing anything. And uh, the objection to being FIPS compliant is the combination of having to do the evil binary dances that OpenSSL had to do. Uh, because for FIPS compliance, you had to have a very special binary that was built and you can kind of partially monkey patch it around, but it required lots of very interesting um, um, gymnastics in order to, to keep your compliance. And then also the simple act of getting FIPS compliance is incredibly time consuming, a lot of effort, and very, very, very expensive. And we are not gonna do that work yeah. for it. If someone else wants to assist with getting FIPS compliance, please talk to the LibreSSL team. I believe there, there could be some interest there, but it is not a, a, a strong priority for us. <laughs> Can't imagine. I hope that that was recorded. I think for PCI DSS, for instance, it matters. If you if you're a so we're a Dutch company, and if we process uh, credit card data, we're still we still need to be PCI compliant. Not FIPS, no. But FIPS, that was. It, it forced you to use insecure things? I'm, I, I, I don't get that, so. Some criteria is kind of an international standard where it's not that easy to implement the things on their local requirements, kind of. Uh, country by country. There is, I think, up to common criteria level five or something like this is internationally accepted and above the trade. So the not, not so common criteria go all the way from level one to five. Any of you, anything else from you? I have some backups, so we could have fun. No, so I think we what what if if it happens it would be switchable but defaulting, so you can always switch to the other one because it, it's just then uh, well it's not a drop-in replacement but mostly it's a so you, you still get a fully functional uh, base system so that that would not well there there is a there is a reason that these sources live in crypto because the whole user source crypto tree would just be removed for export. In the, in the olden days, that's what, I, that's what they told me. Yes, Peter. So to, to respond to that, um, the US removed most of its requirements for export of open source crypto, and I believe in 2004, the general US regulations about exporting any product still apply. But the, the for anything that is open source crypto or a, um, uh, like like easily purchasable crypto is basically with you don't need to do the, the evil export dance anymore.
by the nature of redress available in the state of Canada, U.S. export laws do not apply because it's not in the U.S. Yeah, so the, the redress is held. Hey, you know, basically, whatever the U.S. is doing. Yes. So it, it's for a lot of areas. You guys got to be very careful about that. Yeah, but this is also. Because research, research that with lawyers. Good. And according to the things we've been told, that does not apply. They make they make a point of not having any U.S. citizen work on the crypto code. Okay, any other questions? Yes? Is there anything in the, for users of SSL or open SSL to uh, prevent conflict? Because I know recently open OpenNTTD requires... Ah, yes, yeah. So the question is if there's anything uh, that would prevent conflicts in the port tree, because OpenNTPD, uh, OBHTPD, and... Uh, let's scan crypt, which is another port that I created recently. They require Libra SSL. Um, yeah, so if you would, uh, the, the, the issue is that the develop ports actually provide you the features that you need for these uh, as well. Uh, so with the new port framework that, we that I talked about earlier, uh, it should be a lot easier to uh, to make it so that the development port satisfies the dependency for the regular one. Can, does that make any sense to you? Yeah, if you have another port that you want to have that requires perhaps yeah. OpenSSL. No, this, uh, this, this is getting better with the new uses framework. That is... So it's not there for It's not there. It is there... But it's not in the tree yet, which is slightly different. It's, it's in review, so it's almost done. So you, can, you should expect that in the coming week or weeks. Maybe. <laughs> Anything else? Please, otherwise I'll show you my backup slides and that's boring. This is the Pearl Entropy Gathering Demon. So, oh, 12 years you don't need it anymore, but still it's in there. And it's not guarded with anything. So I, I was very lucky. This is from Apache 2.4, right? This is, not, this is not something old I dug up from the, uh, from the archives. This is, that is properly new software. We're now at 20, but this was at the time uh, that LibreSSL was released. This is the uh, DES deprecation. If you go through it, it's actually... Uh, it's not difficult to change. So that it, it, it's not like you have to do massive things to actually do it. So this has changed, and that has changed. I, I don't see the big deal with not being able to do that, and the same goes for the other stuff. So what, what's your, why haven't you done this? Why have you left all the deprecated uh, 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 methods in there? And, uh, oh, and how broken OpenSSL is. This is a famous one where um, this is, this is old, so in 2004, somebody committed a change, and this is the relevant part. It tries to do an OR in, a, in an IF check, and it uses exclamation marks instead of pipes. So nobody has ever used this, because anything that would use this would blow up and it wouldn't compile. You, would, you must fix this to get it to compile. What did they do? They fixed it in the, poor, in, in the source uh, code. They just didn't rip it out. Yes, Sean? Why haven't we trolled anyone who's still using PES by changing up what the lock code can be behind the scenes? <laughs> <laughs> so why haven't we changed DES to ROT13? Well, uh, yeah, well, that would be evil. But it would be fun. <laughs> 
that would some that that is something that I see Bob Beck doing. Yes, <laughs> he is completely capable of such treachery. And there's this one, which is also fun. This is oh, I didn't have the registration date. There is a domain registration for LibreSSH.org, and that is done by. Pardon? Sore losers. That's what they are. Is there anybody out here in the audience that is running natively B oh, FreeBSD but doesn't have a dog fooding sticker just yet? <laughs> yeah, shut up, Peter. I'm waiting for someone to raise their hand. Yeah, okay. I grant you that. So, okay. These are the last two. You, you don't, you have no idea of how many have been. Uh, Four. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that was it. So I'll, I'll make this public. There's a lot of links in here. The important ones are the wiki. So you can find all of the patches in these three. Uh, on my blog, if I do anything, I make sure that I, well, I started that, but blogging is hard takes more, way more time than I would like. And the Libre BSD stuff, which is currently broken, I would assume. But at least you can find all the bits that you need on my GitHub. So be merry. And if you find anything that is not working, let me know. My, my email address is uh, public. It's everywhere. So there's so many ways that you can contact me. And I'm always happy to fix more. Fixing is the only thing I'm good at, obviously. Thank you for your attention. Ooh, we're only two minutes late. This is amazing. Thank you.